welcome back to the channel guys in this episode we go up the mountain to check out the missing view from baslai cafe and then later on we hit the water for some queer hunting at night thank you for joining the dive today you are watching creator hunter well we took a day off of diving because our friend Brian is flying out tomorrow. And we drove up this random mountain road way up the mountain. My car is probably overheated. And we found this place called Baslai Bess Cafe. And it's got this huge tower. You could have a coffee or whatever. And it's supposed to be overlooking the mountain and the ocean at the same time. It's way up the mountain. I've never been here. Living here two years, so... Let's go check it out, see if the views are really good, because it's a long drive. What's the good coffee? Good coffee? coffee? Well, what's that? I want the strong black coffee. Hey, Arabica. Let's get some coffee. Check out this tower. So, last day in Darwin, we went and did some a little exploration, tons of diving. Your best night dive ever last night? Yeah, the night before last. The night, night before last, whatever Abs it was. Uh, rockets, yeah, absolutely insane. And I never use that word, <laughs> but it was insane. Yeah. I mean, 75 minutes underwater, it went in about half, like it was five or 10 minutes. Yeah, Let me take this off. We yeah. had critters everywhere. We had, you know, schools of pipefish you could say um and not just robust we had robust with the ornate ghosts together um, nudie branks all over the place it was just out of this world probably the best night dive i've ever ever made in my life we got some good footage so go check out brian davies scuba after this and that one's pretty known for critter hunting but right now is the best season too so it's even better it's crazy on our first dive when he got off the plane he got on the boat we saw mimics blue rings uh coconut aquas everything you can think of yeah. blew our mind so i'm sure it blew your mind yeah um, <laughs> if you said to me after looking at when you'd helped finn snow out and how long it took to find one for him yeah um and then i on my second dive and my third dive was it that uh, blue rings or was it third or f second, second third um, yeah just we, nuts just nuts and, and mimic I mean, just when, even when we were doing the safety stop, <laughs> and, one, and, and a mimic just appeared. I mean, six, seven meters, and the mimic's there just saying, film me, film me. Crazy, we, absolutely crazy. Me and Finn been looking for the mimic for like a year and a half, two years, didn't find one. Brian arrives and we see him every day now. So even two on a dive and blue ring. On the same dive. It's been insane. So you're lucky. Right now we're gonna go way up to this tower and have a coffee, I think. That's why you're always skinny. Because I went up the ladder upstairs. Oh, who's the owner of this one? I don't know. This one, this one. Oh, how's the coffee? Hey, here we are. Nice views. Pretty foggy today, so you can't really see Siki Horror, but. Is this my one, is it? Is that no sugar? No sugar. No sugar. It's a, it's a trick. <laughs> so this is Best Night Cafe and awesome views, but it's at least, it's probably 10 degrees colder than down at the coast. So I really like that. I was afraid it's gonna be super hot like everywhere else. But I think we're gonna go back to the coast, go to the beach, do whatever for Brian's last day and then Back to diving tomorrow. So as you can see, there's more to do in Darwin than diving. And this is the, the first spot Critter Hunters brought me to. And I would be back here at least once a week. The view's fabulous. The little coffee shop's excellent. And I can stock up on my coffee. So it's the next day. We just got done dropping Brian off at the airport. Huge shout out to Brian Davies for coming and spending a week with me diving and hanging out. Um, 
now I'm getting my gear ready. We're gonna go do an uh, awesome night dive at one of our favorite spots. Uh, but first, you guys, you've been asking me to create like a group dive trip, and I finally did. Uh, that's why I went to Porta Galera a couple months ago. I've partnered with Scandi Divers and we've created a week long, like perfect dive trip for my subscribers and me. I'll, I'll be on the trip, obviously. Um, it's gonna be like catered to people that wanna see the rare critters, muck diving, macro stuff, uh, awesome, awesome stuff like that. Uh, or people that want to learn better photography and underwater videography. So that's going to be in November, November 5, I believe, seven days. Uh, I'll put the email down below. You can contact Chris and sign up for the tour. We can only take so many spots, but yeah, I think you guys, uh, I think this is going to be a dream dive trip and I hope you can join me. So, all right, let's go dive. Now we're here at one of our favorite dive sites. It's me and Alex and Gitan and Judea. And this chicken is freaking out. Look at this chicken. Ew. <laughs> and we're yeah, we're gonna go do a night dive. Our favorite, one of our favorite spots. Uh, is it your favorite, Kuya? And uh, Madam Gitan? Yeah. Night diving. We saw some, For now. <laughs> we saw some awesome stuff here like two nights ago. Well, we always do. But it blew Brian's. Brian's mind and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Let's go dive. This is one awesome species of nudie prank, and it's one you don't see every day. I have seen them around Dowen, and it's in our book about nudie prank, but it's again not one that I see on every dive. These guys are awesome to film, especially at night. They are really colorful and they don't look like every other nudie we see. I'm always glad to find awesome species like this. They do come in a couple different varieties, but this one is the one that I usually see with the bright, bright pink. And I guess that little beige yellow tinge. But it's a cool little dude. This one was probably about two centimeters long, so not tiny compared to most looties that we find. On this dive site, we found a lot of ornate ghost pipefish. And here's one right now. Even when I was filming other things, these little pipefish were following me around, trying to use my camera as like a little hiding spot. It was cute, but there were so many everywhere. Oddly, I don't see yellow ones very often, but on this dive site, we probably saw 10. And here's two more, but you might notice that this one has eggs inside its little pouch. You can see him pulsing that pouch back and forth, kind of oxygenating the eggs and moving them around. And I don't know, I bet they're pretty close to hatching. I would love to catch that on film, but it was just good to be able to sit here for a while and get a good shot of these eggs inside his pouch. It was not easy, believe me. But if you look close, you can see even little tiny eyes inside those eggs. This is one of my favorite shots that I've gotten in a long time. And of course, it's a pretty cool species on its own. Here's two more ghost pipe fish, but these are robust. Pretty awesome looking, and they blend in perfectly with the grass around this dive site. 
can't believe how many ghost bite fish there are here at this dive site. And you don't see them year round, so it must be the season. Here's a closer up shot, and hey, I think maybe that one has some eggs too. I didn't notice during the dive, so I didn't try to film them. And to be honest, I probably wanted them anyway. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time to try to get those shots. These from tail to nose are probably about five inches long. Not real huge, not real tiny either, but their claim to fame is that awesome camouflage. Just pointing straight down, looking like a dead leaf. This is a little bobtail squid, and I know I've seen these a lot, maybe every dive even. But this one is a red one that I don't see very often, if ever. I think I've only seen two or three of these in the last two years here in Dowin. So this is an awesome one I had to stop and film. If you guys remember from my other episodes, usually they're blue or dark purple. This dive site's pretty well known for the Circe Looney Break. And they're usually my nemesis. They're so hard to film. I mean, they're about as small as my pinky fingernail, but they're also completely transparent, so super hard to film. But today, I was using my tripod and my snoot, and I wanted to get the perfect shot. And finally, after a little bit of patience, I think I got them pretty good. You can actually see what it is. I even got them crawling across the sand. Usually they're just sitting there eating motionless and can't really tell what it is. But when he's crawling like this in motion, it's pretty awesome. You can see exactly what's going on. It's my first good shot of a Circe nudie brain. Now this is related to a Circe, but it's not one. It's a polybrank. And on this dive site, I probably saw 10 of these polybranks in one dive. And this one was a little bit different color than the rest. They were all different colors, but this one was pretty cool. It just looks like a walking rose that just slithers around. And the only reason you could tell what's front and back is those rhinophores up front. You can see when I get close with the snoot, it just looks like flower petals, but slithering along the sand. This guy wasn't very small, a lot bigger than that last Circe. Uh, I'd say about half the size of a golf ball, which in terms of nudie break are pretty big. Here's a little bit of a close-up. It's getting some plankton stuck in there that are attracted to my light, but I wanted to show what those little flower petals look like. And then I ran into another Circe. This one is Elegans, and it's huge. This one is, well, it's about as big as maybe a softball, maybe a little bit bigger. It could definitely fill a hat. And this looks even more like a rose walking along the sand. And you can see those rhinophores up front. Now I've seen a lot of these guys, especially on this dive site. And they're really hard to film. Not as hard as that little tiny clear one, but you know, I wanted to get a close up of those little flower petals. And I think I finally got them pretty good. And you guys can see what kind of a weird little nudie break this is. There's his rhinophores and he's slithering across the sand. I like when I use my snoot, it doesn't attract so much plankton to my light. Because there's not a lot of light to be attracted to. When I don't use the little snoot, 
There's plankton everywhere, just completely blocking the shot and bothering the little looty break. Anyways, I finally got some good shots of Polybrake and Circe's on this dive, and I'm pretty happy with the progress. I think I'm going to start using a tripod more often.